Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the Venom Vlog, and here we are at the conclusion of Carnage Week, our final Carnage Week. Uh, you know, unless I dip into the MC2 universe with uh, Mayday Parker, maybe we'll do another one at some point if uh, the episodes permit it, you know, if we still have enough episodes left to get one in there, um, you know, or get another week in there. I I'll, I'll do it, because uh, we haven't talked about Mayday Parker and her universe yet, and there's definitely some symbiote action over there. Even though it's a parallel world, maybe... Maybe we can have some fun in there at some point before we end the show. But this is pretty much the end of Carnage as a comic book character. This will catch us up to, you know, present day or where we left off. Because uh, right now we're doing Extreme Carnage and that Lasher issue will be coming up soon, my discussion of that. Uh, so we're knee deep in Extreme Carnage right now so we know where he's going. But this is the story that kind of leads into Donny Cates' run of uh, of Carnage, or Venom, you know, the uh, Donny Cates' Venom run, and that had Carnage in it, and Absolute Carnage. Um, in fact, one of these stories even takes place during uh, Absolute Carnage, but we're going to, well, it doesn't take place, it came out during Absolute Carnage, but it takes place during Red Goblin. Uh, and so that's what we're going to end this whole Carnage week with is the Red Goblin storyline, which wraps up Dan Slott's run, you know, his eight-year or so run on Spider-Man. The guy wrote, like, over 100 issues of Amazing Spider-Man and uh, did a lot of work, you know, did a lot of things. Some things people liked, some things people didn't. I overall enjoyed his run. I was critical about some things in it, but I still, at the end of the day, kind of liked it. Although the ending here, I really, I, I don't know, I guess I could go back and forth on it. It's not my favorite, like, for sure. It's, it's certainly not a... I don't think it's a great ending to his run. Uh, some people might disagree, and that's fine. I think it has some good moments in it, for sure. And I can definitely see he's trying to button up a lot of stuff. But overall, like, I mean, he even had Christo Gage coming in and help him write this. And that makes me wonder how much of this run, uh, ending of the run, was actually Dan Slott's, and how much of it was Marvel trying to steer him to do something different or set up the next thing that Nick Spencer was going to do. So I'm kind of curious about that. I mean, maybe none of that played in, and maybe Dan was just like, hey, Christos was here with me during this whole journey. I'd like him to be here at the end too, and that could be because I, I believe they're friends in real life. So, And Christos is a great guy. I've met him numerous times, super awesome. So I don't know the reason, uh, but for me, like the ending just wasn't uh, a big ending to me like as far as like what everything that was being set up like I always go back to looking at um big time that was like the first major story and there are threads in here that wrap up things that were set up in big time like the death of Phil Urich unfortunately because I love that character um but he was killed by Dan Slott who also made him the new Hobgoblin too so it was kind of like Dan like hey I built this guy up and now this is where his story ends and then Dan also went a step further though I was like okay Phil Urich dying I could maybe forgive that a little bit then he killed another character in this. So we are going to get into spoilers if you haven't, you know, read this book yet. I highly recommend you go do it and judge for yourself what you think of it. And uh, if you get a chance, read some of Dan Slott's run along the way that leads up to this. Although, like I said, there are some threads that are wrapped up in here. But the actual battle between Peter and Norman, usually that's what it comes down to is Peter versus Norman Osborn. But I just didn't think this was very smart, uh, even for Norman. I think Norman was just desperate. And we'll get into that as we talk about this story here. Let's get into this because there is a lot to go over. But again, I'm, I'm going to try to keep it as brief as I can. Uh, the book starts off, I think, in the Amazing Spider-Man 794 and 795. It's like two issues where they're kind of setting up a story in the background. And then they have other moments in there. It's like Loki as, Doc, you know, as the Sorcerer Supreme for Doctor Strange. There's like a story with Spider-Man teaming up with him. And then there's like Spider-Man fighting someone who's uh, after the Zodiac Key. Um, all of that kind of starts here in issue 794 when these two agents show up in this underground facility and they say, hey, we're transporting something, you know, um, we don't know what's in it. Can you tell us? And he's like, I don't know. But if you were sent down here to drop it off here, this is where the worst of the worst goes. We're, we're built, you know, underwater to keep prisoners down here so that there's little chance of escape. But we also keep artifacts down here. And that's where the Zodiac Key comes in. So these two people open up the case that they were carrying and you see a bunch of Green Goblin pumpkin bombs and they use it to blow half the place up <laughs> and uh, before they, you know, before they initiate lockdown and the Zodiac Key escapes and then these two people get what they really came for. So apparently they're new agents, but they were sent there and paid and put into that position by Norman Osborn who sent them there for something. So as everyone's dealing with the Zodiac Key escaping and, and you know, a possible flood coming, they run off and grab the uh, Carnage symbiote and bring it back to you know, bring it back to Norman Osborn. So at the end of the uh, one of the issues, Norman is looking at the Carnage symbiote in a jar. Which I know we talked about this before. Like Carnage isn't really a symbiote. Uh, you can, I guess, separate Carnage 
from the symbiote, but whatever you do to it, I think if you destroy it, especially, or if it dies, which it has done in the comics too, on its own, it's still in his blood. So at some point uh, he'll, you know, rejuvenate enough to where he can just be taken over by Carnage again, which always made me wonder when Venom tore the symbiote off of Carnage and ate it and then got taken over by that mayor guy, you know, the, the mayor evil mayor guy or whatever he took the you know venom symbiote and ripped it off eddie brock and then was playing with it like it was a toy and then released it back into the wild said all right living you know creature i don't need you anymore and it, it went off and i guess we can assume maybe what happened to it afterwards i guess it eventually went back to to venom and then it went on to matt gargan after soon after that so you never really knew what happened to the original carnage i guess it was just digested and it's gone um and then cletus went to another dimension to get a replacement symbiote, which I'm like, but, but did he need to do that? Couldn't he have just, you know, rejuvenated? I don't know. Comics are weird, man. <laughs> so anyway, this starts off and Norman Osborn now has possession of the symbiote. He, cra you know, cracks it out of the case and it covers him and he's ready to go to town and uh, enact his revenge. And the reason he does this, the reason why he, uh, you know, bonds with the symbiote is because uh, Spider-Man put nanobots inside Norman Osborn to suppress the madness. I basically, Norman is, you know, uh, broken in a lot of ways uh, mentally uh, because of the Oz formula or whatever, you know, the, the, the stuff that, you know, gives him superpowers or super strength at least and enhances him um, and made him the Green Goblin. That stuff has altered his mind. And so with it, there is a level of madness. So these nanobots, I guess, are consistently, um, I guess, injecting Norman with something or suppressing somehow that, that um, his access to that madness or that part of his brain where he'll, you know, lose it. So now Norman's desperate. He's like, I've tried magic. I've tried all these different things to try to undo and destroy these nanobots that are inside of me that Spider-Man put in here, but nothing's working. So I'm going to essentially free the Carnage symbiote, bond with it, let it go inside me and shred everything up. And then hopefully I can still control it because I'm Norman Osborn. He's got an ego on him. So he's like, I can control this thing. And so he tries, but he doesn't. And in the end, him in the suit have to make a deal. He's like, look, I'll, I'll help you kill things, but you got to help me get back at Spider-Man. And he goes, and I know how to do it. So of course he goes out and kidnaps uh, J. Jonah Jameson. You don't really know who he kidnaps at first, but it turns out it's J. Jonah Jameson. And meanwhile, while he has him captured and he's questioning him, trying to figure out who Spider-Man is, because obviously after one more day, everyone forgot who Spider-Man was. Their memories were erased by a spell that Doctor Strange uh, enacted, but it threw a deal that Mephi no, that was like Doctor Strange did not. He couldn't do the spell. Mephisto was the one who ended up doing that for Peter Parker. And now Norman wants to know. He's like, I used to know who he was. I don't know why I don't anymore. I want to find out. And that's kind of what's happening over Dan Slott's run. People here and there, even in this run, uh, Flash Thompson, who's running around as Agent Venom, uh, Agent Anti-Venom, and he's uh, healing people. He's got like, you know, his powers have enhanced big time. Uh, there's even a part where him and Spider-Man team up to fight Philip Urich, the Hobgoblin, and Philip cuts someone's hand off and Flash is able to reattach it and rebond it and reconnect all the nerves. So Flash is pretty OP and he's running around kind of being like a paramedic in a way. Like his new Agent Anti-Venom ways isn't that he's just a soldier, but that's it. also he's like a field medic and he's trying to help people who get hurt in the process anytime he's in battle with a, like a supervillain. So I kind of liked all that. I thought all that worked out really well. And then also he gets reacquainted with Liz Allen, who knows he's Agent Anti-Venom. She's like, look, I know the suit you're wearing. You know, that came from the uh, was it Venom Inc. storyline, which we haven't gone over yet on the show, but we will. So if you're watching this later in the playlist, you saw that episode a, co a couple episodes ago, uh, most likely. Um, so, yeah, so Spider-Man and, uh, and Flash team up to fight Philip Urich, but eventually Philip Urich uh, gets away and he goes back to his hideout where Norman Osborn is and Norman Osborn kills him so we say goodbye to poor philip Eric, who i liked he was the green goblin in the 90s he found one of norman's old uh hideouts stole the gear and became a, a green goblin a, like a heroic one but over the years he's kind of lost his way and went more of super villain um and norman osborne by the way it now that he has a carnage symbiote the two guards that are the two agents that he used to, to go break out the carnage symbiote he kills them and he just starts cleaning up all of his loose ends and then even goes and threatens uh, Liz Allen that he wants to take over Alchemex. And of, and of course, she's like, I'm not going to let you do it. And he's like, yeah, but I have your son now. And Norman uh, then uses his Carnage symbiote to bond some of it with young Normie. 
Um, so, and kind of turning Normie into uh, the goblin child, I think was his name. And so he's like, I'll give you your son back, maybe, if you give me the company. And so kind of puts Liz in a, a tough situation. But he's also threatening to kill all of Spider-Man's loved ones. Now that he knows, you know, he questioned J. Jonah Jameson, and he found out that Peter Parker is Spider-Man, he goes and is like, I'm going to go threaten and try to kill everyone who's ever been close to Peter Parker. And that's mainly the book. I mean, like from, I've done all the setup and I've told you all some of the key moments, um, but that's mainly the book. I mean, eventually I think Flash Thompson shows up to, he finds J. Jonah Jameson and frees him. And then people like, you know, uh, then as that's happening, Peter's getting the living crap kicked out of him by Norman. They get in a big fight and Norman's kind of winning, and and Peter is wounded, and decides, all right, I'm going to hide, and uh, and and kind of hide out and stay away from him for a minute so I can heal, and uh, and then, uh, but I'm going to let him know I'm giving up. So he like hangs his shirt up like a flag, like waving the white flag, and so that sends Norman off. He's like, okay, he's wounded. I'll find him eventually. I'm going to go back to Alchemex and try to work that out, or you know, figure things out. He's like, now that I have this power. This is what I want to do. But the suit is like, no, like we're, we want to go kill. And we got your grandson now who's bonded kind of as part of us. And we want to just go cause carnage, you know. So that's where Norman is kind of a pendulum swinging back and forth in control, out of control, in control, out of control. And there's a little bit of that going on. And then, um, you know, so as that's happening, Spider-Man finally is like, OK, I got to, you know, nut up here and I got to go fight Norman again, who just beat me as, you know, as the Red Goblin, he beat me. Uh, he's like, but I still need a little bit more time. So I need my family protected. I need Aunt May protected. I need Mary Jane protected. Um, you know, so he reaches out to Flash and he's like, hey, Flash Thompson, Agent Venom. And he's like, yeah, how do you know who I am? How'd you get this link? And he's like, don't worry about it. He's like, I, I need your help. You know, I'm pulling in all my favors. I need you to protect my loved ones. And that happens with uh, Clash, who's this other superhero, um, and a couple other characters. Like, they're all, like, coming in. Like, anyone who kind of owes Peter a favor that's been throughout the Dan Slot run or that he owes a favor to or, or knows or has a connection to and he's, like, trying to ask, you know, hey, will you help me out? Um, he's pulling all of them. Johnny Storm is teaming up with Clash. And there's just all these groups, Silk, you know, Miles Morales, everyone's showing up trying to protect the loved ones of Peter Parker as red goblin is going around attacking each of them like one by one um and then what ends up happening is the green or the red goblin sorry the green goblin the red goblin ends up beating the crap out of all of them he takes down flash um flash the reason he takes down flash is because as red goblin starts taking down miles and silk he's pretty much killing them it looks like he's going to kill i mean he's wounded them so bad they could die so flash is now being a paramedic and he's healing them and trying to help them and while he's doing that he's distracted so norman is able to you know, outthink Flash that way and starts hurting more people so that Flash will be distracted in healing them. And then Red Goblin, you know, takes Flash down. So Flash is on the verge of death at one point in the story. And so are all the other characters, but Flash ended up healing them. So then Norman's like, okay, well, now that I got the sidekicks out of the way, I'm going to go after the main courses. So where's Aunt May at? And he goes after Aunt May. Uh, where, you know, where's, uh you know, Mary Jane at? You know, so he goes after Mary Jane. And what he does is, when he goes after Mary Jane, um, you know, J. Jonah Jameson, who's now been freed by Flash Thompson, he's like, all right, I need to call some favors. So he calls Eddie Brock uh, and he calls Dr. Octopus, Otto Octavius. And he's like, um, I need you all to protect uh, Mary Jane and Aunt May. So Doc Ock gets to come in and save Aunt May from a carnage attack, which is pretty cool. And he's in his like clone body, obviously. Um, so that's pretty neat. He shows up and helps Aunt May and he even says like, you know, Peter's like, why are you doing this? And he's like, because I have your memory still. And he goes, and I just can't let anything happen to this lady. And he goes, oh, I'm going to be sick. <laughs> um, so then in Mary Jane, Eddie Brock shows up to save Mary Jane, which I thought, again, Dan did a pretty good job. You know, uh, Mary Jane and Venom have a history, obviously, um, where he scared the living tar out of her like, way back when. And then Aunt May and, and Doc Ock have a history. So it was really cool that he kind of brought those characters together and, and kind of try to have that happen and have them tie up. And then you also get, like I said, a Venom versus Carnage fight. But it's uh, Norman Osborn carnage uh, fighting Venom. And it, around with fire around and everything, because Mary Jane lives in Stark Towers. She's Tony Stark's like new assistant. So she's turning on all the defenses, and it's hurting Venom. And he's like, can you turn this stuff off? It's hurting me, and I'm trying to protect you. So there's, yeah, big battles ensue. It's, it's like I said, it's a big popcorn flick. Um, and like I said, you have uh, Doc Ock who fights uh, Normie. Normie shows up as Goblin Child to try to kill Aunt May. And Doc Ock, you know, ends up stopping him. 
And then they all work together to try to save this kid. And so, you know, Doc Ock knocks him down and says, okay, you're just a child. We need to, you know, save you. And so Spider-Man shows up and says, yes, let's bring him to the Human Torch. You know, Fantastic Four, let's get them working on something, maybe with um, Alchemex and stuff like that, you know, since they were able to create the Agent Anti-Venom suit. And, uh, and you know, I'll reach out to uh, Flash if I can, but go to Alchemex, bring Normie there, try to help him. And now that I know Aunt May is safe and Mary Jane is safe, I'm going to go take the fight to Norman Osborn. But before he goes, Eddie says, look, I'm wounded. I, I I need time to rest up and heal. Why don't you take the suit back? And, you know, of course, Peter's like, I don't want to. Like, me and that suit don't have a good history. He's like, yes, but it's after Flash. It's been on Flash. It's been on me. We're trying to do the right thing. It's not corrupted anymore. So please take it and use it to fight Norman. You're going to need all the help you can get. So Spider-Man agrees and becomes black costume Spider-Man again with a slight, you know, different design and stuff. Um, but uh, but he and I know one thing is people don't like the eyes. There's, I'll put the image up there. There's uh, these eyes where the eyes don't look like they're connected to his head. It looks really weird. Um, but yeah, people, I remember making a big deal out of that. But so now we have Spider-Man and the black costume fighting Norman Osborn in the Carnage costume. And I'm like, OK, I like that. I, I don't hate that overall. But in the end, I was like, if it's going to be Norman Osborn versus Peter Parker, we need that fight. Like, we need that fight to happen. And it does. You know, obviously, in the end, Peter tells Norman, he's like, if you kill me with the red suit on, how are you going to ever take uh, full credit for killing me by yourself? He's like, you're going to have to share the credit with Carnage. And he's like, so is it you who beats me or is it you and the symbiote who beat me? And so Norman, you know, with his ego says, fine. And somehow he's able to resist or tear out the costume or get rid of it. Um, and Spider-Man gets rid of the black costume and says, go back to Eddie. You know, I got it from here. And the two of them have a big fist fight and battle in the streets of New York. And as Norman's fighting him, he says, hey, you know, all your friends, I left a little sliver inside each of them that is going to travel up their body and go right to their brain and kill them in the next like 10 minutes. And Flash is like, uh, oh, no, no, you didn't. And Flash shows up and he has all the little remnants of uh, Carnage symbiote in his hand. And he's like, I went around and checked everybody and uh, and was able to heal them and pull these things out of their bodies. He's like, so no one's dying today. And uh, of course, Peter's like, that's great. Yeah, I, I love that. Uh, thank you for helping. Uh, but in the end, it costs Flash his life because Peter ends up sustaining so many wounds and uh, you know from the attack against uh, from Red Goblin that uh, that Flash has to heal him. And in the end, that's all Flash was able to do was use the last of his strength to heal Peter. And it left him open for a final attack from Norman. And Norman gets the a blow in that kills uh, you know, Flash Thompson. So that really sucked. And I hated to, to read that. Um, and like I said, in the end, because of that death, uh, Spider-Man uses that loss and that, you know, what, you know, it, to pull together the last of his strength. And he takes down Norman Osborn. And then as he beats him, J. Jonah Jameson shows up because he's throughout the whole book, ever since he gave away Peter's identity, because um, he learned that in the comics right before this story arc, you know, happened and stuff. And he was like, I, I need to make amends. He's like, so I tried sending Eddie to protect Mary Jane. I sent uh, Doc Ock to protect, uh, you know, Aunt May. I think he was involved with that. And he goes, but then now I'm here with a gun. Norman can't live. And Peter, you're not a murderer. And I don't want you to be a murderer. But I, I need to make amends to what I've done to you and your family. And this whole night in New York and everything is is part partly my doing. And he's like, so I got to kill Norman. And he goes to aim the gun right at Norman Osborn, pulls the trigger, and Spider-Man jumps in front and takes the bullet. And he said, no. He's like, no one else dies. That was one of the things Dan Slott did in his run was he wanted Peter to really commit to this uh, idea of no one can die. Like, he can't allow it if, if he can help it. And so, uh, so he jumps in front and takes the bullet. And he's like, I... I know it's Norman Osborn. I know he's a piece of work and we hate him, but he needs to be locked up and go to jail. And neither you, J. Jonah Jameson, or me are murderers. And even though we've screwed up and we've done things in the past that maybe we're not proud of, we are not, not going to sink to that level. Um, he goes, Norman was willing to kill us, but I'm not willing to kill him. And I don't want you to kill him either. So, uh, so you know, then I guess J. Jonah Jameson drops the gun and walks away. And Spider-Man, a couple days later, uh, goes by. Uh, he goes to Ravencroft to meet Norman, to talk to him. And he's like, all right, w when's the other shoe going to drop? When are you going to tell everybody who I really am? And turns out Norman doesn't know anymore who uh, Peter Parker really is. Uh, he's like, I don't, what are you talking about? He's like, underneath that mask, you're a punk. And he's like, yeah, Norman, don't you know who I am? And he's like, I'm not Norman. 
I'm Cletus Cassidy. So Spider-Man's like, okay. So somehow Norman didn't fully rip the suit off, or he did, and it left left it in the fire, but enough of it stayed behind to where the the I guess the mind of Cletus Cassidy is more prevalent in Norman's brain, and it kind of suppressed Norman's mind in the back. And obviously we know how that works out because we've been following the Spider-Man Nick Spencer stuff, some of it, and we've been doing those episodes. So hopefully you'll be seeing those episodes listed on the playlist after this. So you can see where it goes from here, because after this, you go into absolute carnage where Norman is in his cell as Cletus and Kindred shows up to like taunt him and stuff. So, uh, so yeah. And then at the end, they are able to save Normie, you know, and uh, he gets reunited with his family, his, you know, Harry and his mom, Liz. Um, and then they have a funeral for Flash and say a few good words, you know, in his in his honor and stuff. Betty, I think, gives a speech. Peter says some words, but not there in front of everybody. I, I kind of wish Peter said something at the actual funeral, but he does say something and, and says his goodbyes. Um, but then a fire, you know, something happens downtown where, you know, they, they see like an ambulance drive by. And so Peter's like, I got to go to work. And J. Jonah Jameson's like, are we good? And Peter's like, I forgive you. He's like, no, you know, what you did sucked, but I forgive you. And um, and this wasn't your fault. Norman Osborn did this, and you were just trying to help. And he goes, but you didn't cause anyone to die, at least in my eyes. And he goes, you just try to do the right thing. He's like, so Jonah, you know, I forgive you. And he goes, but I got to go. You know, and so he goes off. So and then Jonah's like, stupid kid leaving his clothes behind. So so you can see their relationship is you know hopefully going in a better direction. Although it it kind of falters a little bit in Nick Spencer's run, but it's still you know that podcast issue was really fun. Um, and then you have uh, also, you know, they're showing where other people are at this time. You have Doc Ock in his clone body going and working with Anna Marie now in San Francisco um, at uh, the uh, Horizon Labs building as it's being rebuilt. And this is kind of like the, the the ending, the happy ending. There is another issue in here, issue 801 in the trade paperback for Red Goblin, but I'm not going to cover it because it's pretty much just Dan Slott solo writing because all of this that we talked about so far was written by Dan Slott and Christos Gage. But um, but this was like a solo story where he just kind of buttons up his Spider-Man run through the eyes of someone Spider-Man saves. And it was it was OK. But again, like I didn't think Dan Slott did a tremendous job ending his run on Spider-Man. So uh, so, yeah. And then a couple like a year later after that happened, they did um, or during, I mean, it was a year and a half later. Yeah. During Absolute Carnage, they did a one shot called Red Death. Now, this one I'm not going to talk too much about. Uh, there's a couple stories in here. I'll put the title screen up there so you can see who are the writers and artists and stuff on this. Uh, mainly, I think Pete Woods mainly draws this book, but the last story, I think, is drawn by some someone else or a couple other people. And this story, uh, this one shot was just like, I don't know, it was an anthology. It had three short stories in it that are set during the time Norman Osborn had his symbiote, uh, the Carnage symbiote. But then also Normie, who was cured at the end of the last, uh, at the end of the Red Goblin story, he still had a little sliver of something left in him. And so this kind of touches on that too. But I'll be honest, these stories are, wow. Like I think when this book came out, it was like five or six bucks. What a waste. I'm like, luckily I got it included in this trade paperback. I've been buying all of Nick Spencer's run on Comixology when they go on sale. So I've been spending like $2.99 or $3.99 per graphic novel or per volume of his run um so uh so i've been getting them at a really good price but i mean it's just because i don't like to pirate stuff so I, I but i also don't have the money to buy everything so when things go on sale i'm like okay this series um the old man logan i was buying digitally when it went on sale and the immortal hulk i buy digitally when it goes on sale and then also chip sadarsky's daredevil and these are just things that i'm like i want to support in some way but i just don't have all the money to support it at full price unfortunately um so i was glad to see that when i got the absolute carnage edition volume six or seven or whatever of amazing spider-man by nick spencer it had this issue in it. and i'm like oh good i can finally read it instead of spending you know five dollars for it which i don't want to do and i'm glad i did it because i paid three dollars for a graphic novel and this was in there and i'm like and it was a bonus because there was already three issues of amazing spider-man in, in the trade and then this was the fourth issue. And I'm like, well, I paid three bucks for the first three issues. And this was a freebie in my eyes because uh, I didn't really like this at all. This is, I don't have much to say. The first story is Norman trying to control the symbiote and he goes out and just starts killing people indiscriminately. Um, and then he runs across a guy he used to know in college who almost like got him, got Norman kicked out of college, I guess, just some random guy. And so Norman is like, all right, well now I have this carnage suit. I'm going to teach it 
how to not just kill indiscriminately, but kill with a purpose. And it's like, yeah, but the Carnage suit knows that too. I mean, like, it's, I don't know. Carnage has done both. He's killed indiscriminately and he's had a vendetta, you know? So to me, I, I don't know. I just kind of didn't care for this story. Um, but it also leads right into how Norman kidnaps J. Jonah Jameson. So it's like, if you care, which you don't. I, I mean, <laughs> you don't, I don't. <laughs> it doesn't matter. You don't really need to see how he captured J. Jonah Jameson. You just know that he did. It, it couldn't have been too hard. He's a symbiote and a Norman Osborn and a goblin. And J. Jonah Jameson is just an old man with a mustache and a cigar. So it, it's not hard to, to imagine. Um, and then like the last story, like I said, is um, is about Normie. And it's like on set around Halloween, I guess. And he goes and kidnaps his one of his friends from school. And the, the friend fights back. And I don't know. I, I And it's like basically Normie trying not to give in to the suit either. And, and then so the kid he takes, he lets him go um, to show that Normie is strong enough to fight back. And I guess that's it. But then at the end, they have like a little teaser that maybe Normie's still around to taunt his friend as a as a symbiote or whatever. I don't know. It doesn't have any ramifications to anything. It doesn't matter because after this, Normie goes on to become friends with uh, Dylan. And I'm, I much rather like that relationship and kind of like what they try to do with some of that. Although I feel like they dropped the ball on that a little bit too. But for me, I don't know. I didn't really care about this Red Death one shot. It was just a waste of time. But I didn't want to make a separate episode on it. I wanted to include it in here since it's all part of the Red Goblin stuff. Um, but I've talked long enough. I mean, I, I think I went way over the time I wanted to go. I think we're past 25 minutes now. So uh, let me know what you think, though, of the Red Goblin story, if you have any thoughts. I know a lot of you did not like this story. And you've been, you know, as we were building up to talk about it, I've had a lot of comments saying, like, oh, God, Red Goblin, it's terrible, it's terrible. And... I don't think it's the worst story ever, obviously. I mean, I've read a lot of comics and seen a lot of movies and stuff. Like, I, I, I have my definition of what really terrible and bad is. But for me, as someone who kind of enjoyed uh, parts of Dan Slott's run, this was just one of those parts I didn't enjoy that much. And although I do like Christos Gage and like some of his writing, this was also something where I'm like, ah, there's things in here that are neat and I liked um, and that they definitely went back and tried to wrap up some threads or connect some dots that I appreciated, but I, I don't know if they were all executed well. And so I'm just kind of like middle of the road on this one. And you know me, like sometimes I don't mind being middle of the road. Sometimes I hate that I'm middle of the road. And this one, I don't care if that I'm in the middle of the road. I'm just kind of like, eh, whatever. It is what it is. And that's how I feel about it. I hate using idioms too, but that's how I feel about the story. I'm like, it exists. And this is where we lost uh, Flash Thompson. And I was like, ah, oh, that's, I would have much rather lost him in a much different way or something more focused on him or something um but you know he was created in a peter parker amazing spider-man book and he died in an amazing spider-man book i guess i can understand that but he's back now and i would like to see him get back to healing people i don't know what his new symbiote does but hopefully we'll learn more about that in extreme carnage and in the next episode i will talk about extreme carnage because last year came out and uh, and we will dive into that uh, discussion so if you like the channel if you like the episode that we did today even though it's a long-winded one i kind of ranted a little bit and just kind of you know rambled on uh but uh but you know if you like this kind of stuff and you like talking comics in general definitely give us a like and a subscribe if you want to come back for more and definitely check out that playlist like i said i'm going to pop this in there and reshuffle some things so that everything is in order of the books we talked about so far but we still have to get through mike costa's venom run and the time peter parker was spider-man starting with secret wars so we got to get through all that stuff too uh, and then we'll basically have every except you know alternate realities we'll have every spider-man comic from or every venom appearance and carnage appearance uh, outside you know just in the main 616 universe from their creations all the way to extreme carnage i mean that's a lot of stuff that's like 33 years 34 years maybe 35 if you count the peter parker black costume stuff like that's a lot of years of comics <laughs> that we've talked about on this show over the past four years and uh and it's awesome i'm, I'm very happy to have all you here talking it with me so let me know your thoughts on red goblin down below so we can keep talking about this series thanks so much for watching the show as always like share subscribe all that fun stuff and i'll see you in the future peace